What is up, ACL Nation? How are you guys all doing? I'm doing a little bit better at times, but we made it, Mish, all the way to the end of the season. We got one event left to go. I'm out here in Canton, Ohio. Um, just got done having a great time out in Oak Creek, Wisconsin. A lot of fun things going on out there. So looking forward to what the ACL has going forward. I'm looking forward to the Super Bowl. Um, I think it's just going to be one of the best, Mish. Um, obviously, I'm a little under the weather, but how are you doing? I'm doing much better. I have to say, I saw Kat posted a quick, like, uh, video, I guess, of the venue. It's at the, like, Hall of Fame. I don't even know what you call this place. It's like an event center, but it's, it's like, where things happen for football. I'm not sure. It has, like, a football stadium, though, right? Yeah, it's titled Hall of Fame Village. Um, I I think I might have passed it on the way in, um, but it, it looks like it's its own little city. Um, okay. So it looks really I'm, cool. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. I talked to somebody at the uh, urgent care clinic today, and they're like, "Where are you having it at?" And I was like, "Hall of Fame Village." They're like, "Oh, that's gonna be awesome." So they're excited for us. Um, yeah. Can, no. Look, from I did a little bit of snooping on the venue, and I was like, "This place looks pretty dope." So uh, I'm excited to see how it plays out, and I'm really excited for our celebrities. Um, yeah. What a great lineup of of uh, NFL people from all over. Yeah, I was kind of bummed. Like, Aaron Jones one of my favorite football players, and um, I didn't really get a chance to meet him because I decided to just go back to the hotel and play it safe, you know, and kind of catch up and sleep. Plus, I'd like, feel bad, you know, if I got one of my favorite football players sick, and then... Yeah, he's like, I know who did this. His name's yeah, Wally. He blamed me <laughs> for the rest of the season. Um, so, yeah, so I sat that one out, but luckily he won, so hopefully he can make it up to Worlds, and then... Um, this one, um, these are like Terrell Owens and Chad Ochocinco. They carried my fantasy teams for, mm -hmm. I'd say, probably two or three years in a row. So I'm excited to see this one. Yeah, we're going to have like real life. We were talking about this. Like we used to watch the league and you could actually mm -hmm. like yeah. meet the players that you had on your fantasy team and that, that it would be so funny to do cornhole fantasy because you could yell at the players like, hey, I put you on my team and you didn't perform. <laughs> Why are you shooting the airmail in that bag number four and you're losing by 13 points? I need that PPR, man. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, I'm so here for that. <laughs> man, the league is such a great show. I would love to like have the finances and the, the cornhole community built up enough to do a show like that. I think it'd be amazing. <laughs> it's so good. It was so good. Uh, but yeah, so going to our bragging section, I brought up briefly before we hopped on that yesterday and today is prime day. So I was wondering if you bought anything. I bought an air fryer. Um, I was talking to my best friends and I was saying, we were talking about like things we were making and I was like, I don't know. I could just literally eat nothing but crunchy food. It makes no sense. I don't have an air fryer because all I want is everything crunchy. Like, so why don't I have one? And my friend texted me like Prime Day air fryer. So I was like, all right, I gotta yeah. get it. Yeah, air fryer changed my life, especially when I moved out, and I I couldn't really keep the groceries there, but I could always keep frozen foods and stuff. So you know, bacon in the air fryer is amazing. I I love it. Like I don't know if you're a big bacon person or not, but my air fryer cooks bacon perfectly every single time, and I was shocked. And then. Um, Ironically, Johnsonville sausages are amazing in the air fryer. <laughs> okay, plug. On, ACL plug. On, yeah, on the on the bacon setting. So <laughs> there you go. On the bacon set. Oh, I didn't know there's like yeah. setting. So I have I am yeah. very curious to explore this. I was more thinking of like reheating food. Like I heard you can like mm -hmm. take your French fries that you took home and throw them in there and it's like good as new. Yeah. I was bummed though because like those little Tostinos pizzas, you know, the single serve ones. It fits perfectly in my tray, and it just it did not come out good in the air fryer. So I was disappointed. Oh. Yeah. So maybe there's a setting I'm not aware of. But yeah, Amazon Prime Day. I was actually looking forward to this for a long time and completely forgot about it. So um, I'm going to get with corn, and I think we're going to try to get, like, those microphone, like, little cubes, and then uh -huh. a lapel so we can mic our players. Um, the only thing that sucks is they won't be able to hear us in return, which is – kind of what i wanted i want to do like in-game interviews and stuff if you know the players allowed it well, that's how the broadcast is the yeah. players are mic'd but we can't talk to them yeah and the other thing is like on the broadcast there's a delay so yeah the mute button in in the drop button um we won't have that luxury so <laughs> but it's live streaming so it's a little more liberty <laughs> yeah i'm gonna talk with uh trey and fred and make sure that they're okay with the occasional 
gosh darn it, or you know what our players normally like to say. Yeah, that's exactly what they say. Dag nab it. <laughs> gosh darn it. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be fun. Um, so today's episode, I forgot to say, yeah, hopefully we're going to get Dayton Weber joining us and uh, be able to have some chat interaction there. And then we got highlights from the last uh, open shootout. So that was shootout number seven and open number 15 in Oak Creek, Wisconsin. And I kind of started working on the newest commercial from National Number Four. Um, I don't know, we can choose to play that or not play that. I don't know. It's a work in progress. And you know how you know how the chat likes to get on me if it's not a finished product. So, <laughs> well, I'm going to be bragging on you, Mish, because you're going to be carrying the show today. I'm going to I'm going to be trying to recover. Well, we, we also have our odds, which uh, we can do. We'll do at the oh, end. Yeah. We have odds for the shootout coming up this weekend, so we'll go over those. And this is the last one. This is the big one. You know, it's yeah, like it's, yeah. it's now or never if you want to get that money. <laughs> so uh, yeah, definitely, definitely bragging on the staff who made it. Josh, Josh Keck drove to every single place. Proud of him. He's a great dude. He's right here in front of me, trying to distract me, of course. But uh, there he is. Oh geez, nobody yeah, asked so for that, Josh. He, nobody he probably, he probably that. just got too close, and so now he's sick. He's not going to make it the world. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be. A, a fun home stretch. I'm, I'm looking forward to worlds. I'm looking forward to throwing a tray and doubles. And yeah, uh, yeah we and all are. Yeah, uh, hopefully I'm on everybody's uh, picks to win. Nobody's picking you. I mean, you're crazy. This isn't happening. <laughs> oh, man, but we love. should we should have time at worlds to finally do the matches with the commentators. Um, yeah. That it was these shootouts were so, were so cramped in such a short period of time. We're usually flying in Thursday night, leaving Saturday morning, so there's just really no time. But worlds, yeah. we're all going to be there for quite a bit of time. So hopefully, we can yeah. find a little moment to sneak that make in. Make sure that you make sure that you let Anthony know what's happening, no matter what, whether he wants to or not. So um, right. we'll go live at some point for this. We'll do round robin. Mish, myself, Anthony, Bernie, Jeff, and Trey. Yeah, we got this, Wally. We got this. Oh All right. Well, uh, as Wally said, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to have Dayton Weber with us. He was just on the Celebrity Super Bowl, did really well. Um, really an amazing broadcast to watch. He brought so much life to that broadcast. So we're going to chat with him. You also have a chance to send in your questions. If you have questions for him, then we'll go into the highlights and the odds. So quick break, and then we'll get into all of that right after this. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Lift Welcome back, everybody, and we are ready to bring on our guest, the one and only Dayton Weber. Dayton, 
Welcome to the show. How's it going, guys? Thank you for having me on. Love you. Let's go. How you doing? Good. Oh yeah. Yeah, we're we're excited. I got an O date and like how what's been going on since the broadcast because I, your name's popping up everywhere as it should you made sports center i mean you went on tyler's stage i mean just fill us in heck yeah it was it was it's been a blast uh for sure i've been getting lots of phone calls and text messages and messages from from people on all the different social media platforms it's pretty wild got a lot of cool opportunities that i think are going to happen here real soon as nice. they should, as they should. <laughs> I mean, so the rest of your weeks is going to be pretty boring after that. I mean, that's that's a pretty high high moment for you in your life, I'm sure. Heck yeah. Yeah. No. Awesome. Sorry, there's like a little delay, so just bear with us. <laughs> um, but yeah. The, okay, cool. So um, the whole event coming on the Super Bowl, uh, teaming up with Tyler Hubbard. What were your nerves like when the when that broadcast went live? Um, prior to it, my nerves kind of were a little bit earlier in the day. Um, but I just, I just reasserted myself by telling myself, go out there and have fun and be the inspiration you know you can be. So, uh, yeah, that, that relieved a lot of pressure, you know, definitely a couple of course lights helped out as well. <laughs> that you definitely got, does. You Aiming juice. Best. Yeah. Intros I've ever seen. Maybe you came out to the room, and no one's gonna top that all season. You absolutely nailed that. So we to see you on that for coming out. And I think Tyler was a, a pretty good sport about it. And you know, Easy was just like, I don't care about your moment. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw every bag in the hole. But I love how you finished up. And you put that 12 pack. <laughs> Heck yeah! I definitely had to get him back. He was he was stroking. He, you couldn't stop him. He was he did it the rest of the time too. He was he was tough to beat out there. That that intro is he was he was but as well. <laughs> yeah, it is. I will say, and I was telling you this right before we did our interview. I said, you know, even though um, you didn't get the win, all your bags were down the middle, down the middle. I mean, and you were you were throwing on the downhill side, I believe, right? Yes. Yeah. It was definitely it was definitely quick on that that board down there, uh, like you said, everything just kept going right over the hole. It was it was hard to back it down, but I finally got the hang of it last round. But at least I did get a hang of it. <laughs> yeah, if only it was the twenty one, right? You would have had a chance for a comeback. <laughs> right, one more opportunity. Well, after that, you guys. <laughs> no actually, if you guys probably went further on, you probably would have had some trouble because he was playing his set like an hour later. So, whenever you guys got done playing cornhole, you went over to the venue and he he, he geared up. You're sitting backstage, talking about uh, getting up on stage with him and you know, life at that party too. <laughs> yeah, so the the guys were super cool backstage. Uh, we, me, D Boy, uh, Kenzie few other uh nathaniel and tori we all went backstage and um they all treated us just like we was one of them uh asked us if we wanted anything to drink and stuff like that and uh they got us that and we just hung out backstage uh and then towards the end they they had an encore they stepped off stage for a little bit and then the crowd wanted them to come back wanted them to come back so they they went back out there and they played one song and then they played dancing in the country and one of the guys came back to me and was like hey man when the chorus goes off i want you to run out on stage and hit the worm across it i was like man i can make that happen no doubt so uh <laughs> so yeah I, as soon as chorus went out there i'm i ran out there got everybody's attention first hit the worm then dapped up um uh, dapped up tyler hubbard and Sang with him for a little bit and I imagine just, the uh, sang with him and danced with him for a little bit. It was all good, great time. <laughs> I love that. Awesome. What was that, Wally? I said, I imagine the crowd was going crazy when you came out for that. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> there was like, tw there was so many people out there. I got to like 
Like, you know how you see all, like, the singers and stuff that are reaching down to the crowd and you got everybody reaching back up? I got to do that for a little bit. That was sick. That's yeah. amazing. Top. That's got to be a top moment of your life. And, you know, you you attract this, right, Dayton, because you're such a positive and inspirational person. I know that's really important to you. And, like, what do you think made you go down that path? Somebody who has a disability could go down a very different path, but you've chosen to take it as a strength. And why do you think that is? Um, I... I leave it up to the man upstairs personally. Um, he helps me with a lot of my problems, but um, just focus. I, I just always enjoy a challenge. I think it's my biggest thing. I, I enjoy conquering things that I maybe have thought I couldn't do, or maybe that would be a struggle to me. So I, I take them as challenges and not really uh, barriers. It's, it's an incredible trait because, uh, yeah, it's a tra because people who have no disabilities are afraid to do things like you're doing, going on TV or going on a stage or a multitude of other things that you do. Like, you're pretty fearless. Um, and it seems like you really wanted to break the mold of what your mind tells you you can or cannot do. For sure. It's always mind over matter. Uh, for sure. Yeah. Mind over matter. Anything's possible as long as you put your mind to it. What's the craziest thing that you think you've done that most people would be kind of shocked to hear? Uh, the craziest thing I think that I've done, you said? Yeah. Uh, definitely going out there on stage got to be one of them, but um, going <laughs> skydiving with Ryan Windsor was pretty pretty lit. You know skydiving? I didn't yeah, I wouldn't I would. do that so bad, man. I'm afraid that I, I wouldn't be able to do it. <laughs> I love it. I told him. I told him I'd do it any day with him. Anytime he wants to go, we're we're going. Yeah, but Talk you. I mean, you. just the thought. Just the thought that you're swimming and you wrestled. Like, what are other things that you've done that people will be like, how? Yeah, swimming and wrestling. Uh, I went to a place in uh, Mooresville, North Carolina, down um, during Worlds last year. It was a quarry. It's like 25 foot deep at every spot in there so like there's no resting spot or anything i could i swam like the whole day it was <laughs> i can swim real good i don't know about like towing anybody else with me but i can swim for <laughs> myself <laughs> that is uh, so crazy dayton yeah. all right we're gonna take a quick commercial break and come back with more questions with dayton right after this Welcome back, everyone. We're going to continue our chat here with Dayton. 
uh, to find out more about him. And uh, someone in the chat said his go-getter mindset, which I think is very much, uh, you know, who yeah. you are. I'm curious, Dayton, like when this happened to you when you were so young, like what was your parents' response or, or how did your family handle the, the disability? My parents were uh, super supportive in like a different way than most people might think. Um, they, they let me figure things out on my own. Like, so I remember this, um, I don't quite remember this cause I was young, but it's like a story my dad always tells people, but we were at the bank one time and I was, I was real young cause I can't even remember. But the, um, I, my dad had dropped like a dime on the floor and he was like, Hey Dayton, grab that thing up for me. And I sat there and I worked at it. He said like two minutes and Two minutes later, I had that dime up off the ground. He said, this boy is going to accomplish anything. I he couldn't believe it himself. So, like, just different things like that really challenging me in different ways uh, to make myself a better person, more independent. They didn't – yeah, they didn't see you as limited. Right. Yeah, I mean, my second birthday, I got a four-wheeler, gas-powered four-wheeler for my birthday. <laughs> so amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's always been wide open for me riding dirt bikes and full wheelers and stuff like that. That's incredible. Not yeah. too many questions in the chat, so if anybody has any questions, feel free to put them in there. One question I've been seeing going around a lot on Facebook, Dayton, and I, I know you personally, so I, I know it's not going to affect you, but I think with the people here come directly from you there. Um, you saw some of those highlights where Noah Wooten stepping over the line. And with the changes that are coming to effect next year, a lot of people keep bringing your name up at it. But you want to address that and let the people know next year that you ain't worried? Yeah, for sure. So um, I've actually already gotten the go ahead that there would be an exception for me to be able to throw the way that I normally throw. But as if as any of y'all know me, that's not the way I'm going to go about it. So I will be stepping back just a little bit next season to accommodate for the rule for sure there you go keyboard warriors yeah I don't, I don't want i don't want no exceptions that's not that's not me i play to the rules i'm a professional thank you yeah and i feel like if you just start at the back of the board you're going to end up pretty much at the same spot right yeah i'm um i'm not going to move back that much because i still as long as one leg stays in i'm i'm good so hmm. i'll just probably scoot back like six inches or so six inches eight inches something like that i think would be good that makes sense so where do you practice dayton so uh i usually practice at a um a local bar in our area um but now my house just got built i'm moving in hopefully by the end of august but i have a big garage that's attached to it. It's a barn dominium. So it's, it's gonna, uh, the garage, I'll be able to fit four sets of cornhole boards in there. Wow. Uh, it's got 24 foot ceilings. Uh, so I just have my board set up in there right now. There's some construction work going on in there, but I got enough room for my boards. That's amazing. Oh my God. You're going to have so much more opportunity to practice. Everybody better watch out. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> finally and and with it being a barn dominium it's going to be literally right out my i mean it's going to be right there and be practically living in it be practically living in it four sets of boards sounds like a big space so you you uh you do some bow hunting too don't you i do i do a lot of a lot of hunting yeah all different all different, different yeah, weapons use whatever's in season so like you said you got a whole bunch of opportunities that are about to come ahead you, you know let us a little sneak peek, or is it all hey, the uh, same? Just see? Man, I I don't know. Um, I got I got a radio I got a radio station over in Sacramento that I'm gonna be doing a interview with. Um, and then I got a I got a big one. I'm I'm doing a I'm doing a pretty big one tomorrow, but it's gonna be an article. It's not actually gonna be a video. I'm hoping that maybe we can. If they like the article enough, they'll give me the opportunity to make a video. But yeah, that's awesome. That's what the um, so you're doing it tomorrow. But when will it be released? That I'm not sure of yet. Um, okay, I've, I've talked with Marlon about it a little bit. Um, 
but yeah, I'm not sure all of what I'm allowed to say yet. Right on. No worries. Big, I totally big get it. Coming tomorrow. I, I feel like I haven't. Yeah, I can't wait. I feel like I haven't heard this story, so I, maybe some people have. But how did you even get into cornhole in the first place? So I got into cornhole uh, just like anybody else did, uh, playing in the backyard. Um, but I stopped at like a uh, we were at a, a minor league baseball game. And they had a tournament going on, and I was young. I was probably only like 12 or 13. I was like, Dad, I want to get in that tournament. And so we asked them if I could get in. They were like, no, registration. we've already started the tournament. But we do play Friday nights at the American Legion in Hughesville. That, that uh, I can come down there every Friday. It's a blonde draw. And ever since then, I probably haven't missed too many of those blonde draws. It's been <laughs> it's been up and up ever since that's crazy yeah uh, comment here from tim says he's such an inspiration i watched him for the first time at worlds last year and everyone else it was amazed at his ability appreciate him giving credit to the man upstairs so we Thank you. Away from, uh, i think it's elevation church they always said uh you know instead of saying just say it, we put go in front of it and says god is able so talk a little bit about that dude <laughs> Yeah, that, yeah, definitely. I mean, everything's empowered by him. Everything we can, we do is through him. He gives us our strength and our powers. And we just, we're his living proof. And this is a good question. It says, uh, the worm entrance was epic. Got any other tricks up your sleeve that you're holding out for next time? Maybe a reverse worm? <laughs> Yeah, I've definitely been thinking about uh, my next entrance and what I'm going to do next. I'll, I'll definitely come up with something. <laughs> I don't doubt it. <laughs> Speaking of next, we're on the corner. So we got worlds. What are you doing to prepare for Worlds? Man, I'm, I'm, practice, I'm practicing every day. Uh, I try to get out there and at least an hour every day. I mean, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty hot uh, in my garage where I'm throwing right now. I'm kind of, I moved far away from uh, the bar I was playing at. So I, I am getting out there and throwing. It just, the heat takes a toll on you sometimes. So you got you to do it in increments. For sure. You can imagine. Uh, let's see what else, anything else definitely, in here? Definitely got to get locked in because I've been a little bit of a slump recently with a little bit of my release issue, but it's been coming around slowly. What type yeah, of I mean, do you make? Sorry, Mish. No, go ahead. What type of adjustments do you make in between games or round to round? Um, do you switch bags a lot or? Uh, no, I I stay uh, consistent. When I like a bag, I stick with that specific bag. Uh, but some minor adjustments might just be like. Um, I just kind of, not really an adjustment, just kind of like focusing on technique, like keeping my back straight, uh, keep keeping the exact same amount of beads every throw um, in the corner of the bag. Stuff like that is the adjustments that I, I make. I try yeah, that's to what I was going to start. Extra activity in between rounds, that's for sure, because it, it gets to wearing on you. Yeah, I was going to say, it's got to be hard to be consistent. Like I noticed even with like Matt Guy, as a stepper, it doesn't seem like he lands in the same spot every time he steps. It seems like it kind of changes. And I've seen other steppers where like their foot's in the exact same spot every single time. So I can imagine that would make a difference. Yeah, I always, I always try and do things the same way every time. I, I tend to sometimes forget certain steps as a – but – for the most part, I stay pretty strict on it. What I'm curious, Dayton, you know, obviously you're, you're a professional cornhole player. I would imagine that maybe wasn't on your uh, dream list, uh, something you thought you would do. But, like, are, what are some of the things you had in your mind? Like, I'm going to be this or do this. Like, what what's what's that vision you had and, and, and continue to have? My vision is I, I got a couple of pretty – solid visions i feel like um one of them is to have a youtube channel traveling around showing my everyday life of uh how i do things and going and doing 
different uh, fish, going fishing in different spots, going hunting in different spots, uh, going to a cornhole tournament, hitting up just different places, just showing all the things I can do and see what kind of uh, opportunities I can, uh, can uh, I can capitalize on for that. Uh, like if I would take like challenge videos, like if somebody wanted to challenge me to do something, I would I would go make that video or whatever. Another vision of mine is uh, inspirational and motivational speaking. I'm actually taking some uh, classes and I got somebody working with me on like getting better at my speech and uh, talking with big groups of people and kind of extending my story and making it interesting for a whole 30 minutes to an hour session. I love that. There's a guy, I can't remember his name, but I used to watch his videos. No arms, no legs, no worries or no problems, I think was his. Uh, no, what was it? Uh, no, no hands, no feet, uh, no excuses. Was it no excuses, no problems? Maybe that's what Which, it was. Was it Nick Something Boyacek? like that. Was it Nick Boyacek? Or was yes, it, uh, yes. Yeah. It was either Nick Boyacek or oh. my buddy Kyle Maynard. He, he's got this, uh, he, he looks a lot like me too. And he does a lot of impressive things, climbing, <laughs> really? climbing Mount Kilimanjaro and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I'm planning on doing some events like that. That would be would be awesome. You get that YouTube channel, man. I'll be That's watching. That's so bro. cool. Heck yeah, I, I think me that too. I can come up Sign with some up. pretty creative content and some intriguing, uh, intriguing videos for sure. Well, Dayton, we are honored to watch your ride, honestly. <laughs> so uh, we're, we're big fans and we continue to watch uh, everything that you do. So thank you for being such an inspiration and reminding all of us that there really are no limitations. Um, it's such an important lesson that you just embody by doing everyday stuff that you do. So thank you. And thank you for your time today. I really appreciate the support. And I just want everybody to remember the world won't wait. No matter what happens, what what you do or if you're awake or if you're asleep the world won't wait you gotta keep grinding you gotta keep moving stay in motion so true always. so true let's go well, right. much i love fun. it I really thank you Peyton. Having me on. absolutely we'll see you over at uh worlds yep worlds is next <laughs> all right we'll see you there thanks dayton all right all right, we'll take a quick commercial break and be back with our highlights right after this. We're back and it is time for highlights uh, from open number 15. <laughs> is that where we're at? Okay. 
man. Flying by. Yeah. I know. I don't know why that was a struggle. Okay, I mean, let's I start with. I was yeah. All right, let's start with air mails, shall we? I'm gonna roll yeah, with it. it. Air mail time. Yeah, there were a lot of air mails, a lot of roll shots to this open and shootout. So Ooh, back side. Funny awkward moments too, but uh, the air mails are always plenty. looking forward to and, them. And I do gotta say, Mish, there were a lot of short airmail drags and collects. <laughs> oh no, let's not bring up this debate. I can't, Just I can't with it. <laughs> Way more than ten percent. Way more than ten percent. We could get a I stat, love how can we? Players though are starting to fire these airmails. I mean, you can see in some of these highlights here, they're only eight seconds long. The bag's still falling. And the other players already made up their mind they're shooting that airmail. And they're hitting accurate and collecting. It's crazy. Yeah, well, I mean, that's you got to work off automation. So the less you think, the better you'll be, actually. So um, that's the way to go. Can. How about Trevor Kufus lately? I know. Ooh, Very impressive. Making Trevor it in brackets. Yeah. Frank Verona was a, a breakout player this last week. What a Open. great bag. Yeah, he, he had a good, strong run as well. Oh, I thought he was going to make it clap. He did not. Yeah. He only grabbed the one on the right. <laughs> I'll tell you, an underrated part of Fisher's game lately has been his airmail. I was going back to the national highlights, and then there's probably five or six times where he hit an airmail for big points at this last opener shootout. So Fisher Hamilton's airmail has came a long way. And as we get to the end of the season, we start thinking about players that could take down the, ch the world championship. His name's popping up in my head quite a bit. Yeah. Oh, there's there's Frank. Yeah, Moses. So <laughs> a good. Clips, a lot of clips of Ryan Trader doing that all weekend. Just like, oh, come on. Yeah. Right, yeah, Ryan Trader, so impressive. I mean, having to play these names, big names, and, and making strong runs with them. I mean, he really stood out to me. There's a lot of highlights you're seeing here where we're getting at least two, maybe three shots in the eight-second time frame. I don't like this last open I in a hurry. Like we're just ready to get to worlds. Let's just, let's just go. <laughs> let's get there. Oh man. It's just like right here. Three shots in eight seconds. I mean, these guys are firing bags. Well, that was a roll. Well, you had a roll in air mill in between. Two air mills in a roll, yeah. Yeah. That backside in there right there, that's the airmail of the weekend for me. Ryan Trader needed everything. Crazy. Right there. He had to either go backside clean or push through everything to stay alive. Just that backside airmail. Absolutely. Sunday. All right. So let's, speaking of rolls, let's go to our rolls. Yeah. There are a lot of good rolls. What was it Anthony said? He said the one-two punch is a roll and a slick side push now. Those are what he – it used to be slide shot and airmail, but he thinks it's a roll and a slick side push. Those are your important shots. Yeah, depending on how the board's set up. Um, if you put the blocker there in place, your slick side push is huge, being able to push through it. So um, players that come to mind that are at the front of their game doing that, I'm going to go with uh, Alex Rawls. Fisher Hamilton, Mark Richards. So, yep. Put the block in place, airmail over Devin it. Devin Arbaugh. Need, clean it up. And Devin Arbaugh, yep. That's so good. I think Tony made a new friend this weekend. He had no idea who Ryan Trader was this weekend, but they he had some did good battles. No, he said he'd never seen him play before, never heard of him. So, he, he, halfway oh, he, through this. He got match, to know him. <laughs> yeah, halfway through this match at one point, he's like, "Are you uh, are you on a eight man for worlds or something like that?" So he's like, "Are you available?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is too funny. Hey, what a big compliment though. The one of the best players in the game is like, "Hey, are you are you free?" <laughs> you yeah, want a partner? I mean, it's either either make it by winning or you make it by a big name wanting to play with you. So absolutely, he, he accomplished both those this weekend. Yeah, he did. I'm, I'm sorry to hashtag, by the way, me. Hashtag, let the juniors in. <laughs> let the juniors in. <laughs> I'm going to stay out of it. <laughs> yeah. Probably going to stay I, out of people. Man, I, I, I can't believe how many are under 16 in the top 100. I know. I'm surprised, though, you didn't. You weren't just talking about the fact that he's wearing the canine. The canine uh, 
jersey. Oh, I don't have to even speak about him anymore. Everybody knows that he would not be that good without that jersey. So everybody <laughs> knows <laughs> the no, secret's he, out. That one was there's, crazy. There's the role of the week for me. That, Trey Baker that, show me something. That is bananas. Like it's what? A, it's got like the coin slot 2.0. Thing. It's like got it's a basically. coin slot esque. Yeah, it covers up the only spot that you can see and then just drips in. So good shot there. Without the other bags. That's the crazy part. Like, what? Mm. All right. On to the pushes. Here we go. Yeah, big one here for Danny Seals. Came off of his accuracy on these pushes. You can see Nico's off to the side a little bit. No bag is out of play right now. This is what Anthony's talking about. The ability to roll and go slick side. There's a little bit of a confusion <laughs> drama here between these guys. They, they were, uh, I think Devin said one thing and Jill heard another thing, and they kind of went back and forth all, <laughs> all matching. Really? Them. Yeah. Huh. I think he's. I think De I think Joe thought Devin called him something, and Devin's like, "Oh no, I would never say anything like that." I was, I was mad at myself for missing the shot, you know. And, but oh yeah. Joe had no idea, of course, during the time. A little baby penguin there. Got that corner over. Yeah. Jay Rubin is on fire all weekend. Three Strong. bags on the right there. Fisher Hamilton, oh. a little bar of soap action. We saw quite, I saw quite a few bar soaps, actually. Yeah, there's a lot. They're starting to become a regular thing now. Yeah. Speaking of canine jerseys, looking good. How about my other boy right Look, there, Braden? Looking sharp. <laughs> yeah, Braden Wilson. Wally supporting those juniors. I am, man. I'm all about finding new players. Um, I was I was on last year with Weedenfeld. I'm on. Proved to be on again with Trader and Wilson. So who do I got next year? We'll find somebody. I'll make you great. Yeah, you're, you'll find the next one. <laughs> we'll get that canine jersey on your back. You'll be just fine. Did you pause it? Oh. No, I think it froze for a second. Let's see. I'll just pause and start again. Weird. It says it's moving. Let me go back. Come on, highlight video. Work with us here. This was a nasty push, too. It's a shame that it cut out right here because you see uh, Jordan's bag is leaning in, and then Moses was able to push Hold that on, other bag. Hold on. Let me just remove it and then re-add it. It's just done. It's just done, Mish. See if that, like, helps it reload. I don't know what's going on right now. You know... You said you were having uh, internet problems at the hotel, but apparently it's not much better over here. <laughs> and I'm yeah, at so home. <laughs> there's a theme every weekend. Um, the theme for this weekend is just let's survive. Let's just survive. So, <laughs> let's just get way, through it. <laughs> good push right here. This is the push of the week for me. Moses pushing up there. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's like I can't even see anything. Use your imagination. It goes in. Hopefully the awkwards are still working. Okay, yeah, so let me remove this one. Maybe we can come back to it. Let's try this one and see if it works. All right, this is this one's going so far. So not an awkward knuckle, but a very awkward-looking roll bag here from Jordan. So I, I was like, <laughs> what? In, hold on, I hold on. I got to pause it for a second because I saw the curtains fall down, and apparently Jordan Power, like, tripped and nachos went flying. Like, what? Tell us yeah. this he had a cup of cheese land on his forehead or something like that. Oh, so my God. I guess, I guess uh, I don't know, I saw his girlfriend post something, you know, I told you not to tickle me or something like that. So I imagine <laughs> that like, they were kind of horse playing behind the curtain. He fell back and I guess the cheese landed on his face. And I don't, maybe that's why his role looks so weird. That's too good. I can't with it. Gavin had a rough weekend. This is about the only time I saw him have fun. So I want to throw that in there. Just awkward air. <laughs> he's, he's just like whatever. Oh, <clears> good. Is, is the hey, the hey, no, what's happening, me? What? They did, oh, it did it again? It's like the same spot. Man, oh, this man. is just not not our night. What the heck, yeah, dude? So, hopefully, you can get forward? it because that moment that you're talking about, where you fell through the the pipe and drape. I got that. We have Alex down. like, like yeah, and I even zoomed in on Alex's face and everything. Oh no! We, we got to get that. Working. Oh my goodness, that's Maybe so I, good. I, I don't know. I don't know. 
What was that? Maybe if I try and bring it in, no. Okay, yeah, here, I'll, I'll, I'll take it out. Go ahead. Take control. It looks like it's just spinning. Oh, that's Boo. a shame. That is a shame. Yeah, that was I'm a good so one. I'm so invested. Hit. I'm so invested. <laughs> yeah, so if I need to, I can just go ahead and post these maybe on uh, on the on the Facebook and you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about. But yeah, there was there was a yeah. moment where basically Jordan Power was standing on the other side of the curtain. He he fell back in his chair. The pipe and drape starts coming towards Jeremy Fraser and Alex Rawls. Jeremy Fraser shared it on Facebook and all the internet trolls have been having a great time making fun of Alex. You know, they're, you know, they're like the flight or flight. You know, he's definitely a, f- a flight person. <laughs> you know, he's like, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> there's like a moment where you know Jeremy hits an airmail, and then the next thing you know, you see Alex kind of like, "What happened?" And then, and then he kind of ducks down. But then, like, there's a part where the curtain's falling, and you look through the curtain, you can see Ashley. She's like, <laughs> "Oh man, it was fun, good times." Oh yeah. man! All right, well, we're gonna take a commercial break and come back with the uh, the odds after this. Alrighty, um, we have our lines to look at for the shootout coming up this weekend. So we'll look at doubles, uh, men's singles, and women's. Uh, so let's start with doubles, Wally. Let's get it going. All right, at least so this is working. Go. Got that going for us. First time seeing these, so <laughs> bear with us. We're just trying to survive, chat. Remember, we're trying to survive. <laughs> Well, Matt Guy's with Jamie Graham, right? So no more Matt, Matt Guy, Brett Guy. Uh, yeah, so right? I mean, I'm assuming Brett, Brett Guy is there. Davis, one final hurrah to try and keep that streak alive. Yeah. Do you, do you like them I if this is a shootout, or what do you think? I <laughs> I don't know. I mean, 950? I, I don't know. Show. I don't know about, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think I would take it. I really like what I saw in National Number Four out of them. I mean, I wouldn't mind taking a stab at it. I mean, you know, until proven otherwise, right? But I, I do yeah. think that the top four teams there: Philip Lopez Jr., Mark Richards, Matt Guy, Jimmy Graham, Alex Ross, Trey Birchfield, Jimmy Eamons, Kyle Malone. I think those are the four teams that I'm looking as far as who's going to win it. Um, some surprise teams you see there at the bottom: you got Steve Burgess and Derek King. I really like what I'm getting out of them with this new pairing. 
Um, I'll never count out Damon Dennis and Jimmy McGuffin, but how about Mike Lucas and Michael Dingus? Uh, they're, they're back at plus 3,000. I don't, I don't mind that. Yeah. Dame, uh, Damon Dennis, Jimmy McGuffin is always a strong one. And then how about Jacob Trzinski and Austin Slowbomb? I feel like Trzinski is just there to show us who's going to win the next one. Or, you know what I mean? Like, every time he partners up with somebody, they end up winning. So he never, ha- he always has to find a new partner. <laughs> so, exactly. unfortunately, he's, he's like, good luck, Chuck, of the shootouts. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Oh, Jacob. Yep. That's kind of the way it goes sometimes. Also, Duncan Clemmer, Carson Getty. Um, that's a, a random pairing. And Derek Har- Derek Holland and Berkeley Pair. Uh, you know, I like Joe Nee said Jeremy Shermer were in their top 10 team. I, I think plus 1,200. That's a good a good call right there. Yeah, They're I think. Plus, if oh, I, they're a top five team. I think if I got to put money on a winner, um, I'm going to go ahead and split it. I'm going to go with uh, Matt Guy and Jamie Graham. And then my my big money is going to go on Ryan Windsor, Noah Wooten. Noah Wooten, and, okay, Ryan Windsor. Okay, got it. Looking towards the bottom half of the uh, men's singles here. I always love Nate Stevens and Dakota Sully, plus 5,000. I don't mind that one. How about Tornado finally making it to the betting odds? Plus 6,500 there with Mike Ferreira. There you go. We got the Let's cups on there. All right. If I had to pick somebody from this that I think is going to make some noise, I'm looking at Anthony Mayball and Eric Zockline there at plus 6,000. I was just looking at that. I think that's where I'm going. Other than that, I'm kind of probably staying away from this page. Um, I do love what I saw out of Brandon Jones and Travis Purser at national number four. Um, that was a race of 21 type thing, though. So, uh, yeah. Shoot, I a little bit differently. I think Mayball and Zockline might, might match up pretty well together. You don't like Nate Stevens and Dakota Sully at plus 5,000? I do. I just I just feel like Nate Stevens, as good as he is, just kind of depends a little bit too much on that uh, messier board. And I think he can kind of run into some trouble sometimes where it's just a race per round. I'm, I, don't, I don't ever see them getting blown out, but I can see them giving up, you know, chunks of two down the stretch. Mm-hmm. I hear you. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. All right, moving over to men's. Singles, of course, you've got Justin Burton Jr. That it's shocking that he doesn't have one, but either does or neither does Alex Rawls, Jamie Graham, Devin Harbaugh. I mean, it's this crazy. I don't know who page. and Ryan Smith, he's the shootout king. This entire page can win. There isn't one person <laughs> exactly on this, this that I'd be shocked if they won the shootout. Exactly. I mean, yeah, this is crazy. I can't believe this is the last one. Well, sitting here looking at Josh Holland at plus 2,500. He's trying to defend his title, too. So we talked about Eric Davis and Brett Guy. But, you know, Josh Holland has a chance to defend his title. And, and what better way than to do it in Josh Holland style? Just come out of nowhere when everybody's already written you off. True. That's very true. Yeah, I, I find it. I, I guess I put my money on anybody, I guess, whoever you're feeling, because anybody of this page could win. If we go over to the second page, I mean, it kind of continues, right? Like Adam Hisner has won before um, that, at, at plus 3,500. Um, you got Brett Guy on there. You got Carson Getty, Alec Ryan, Noah Wooten. Uh, I mean, I don't know. It's crazy. It's crazy how many people are left. Yeah, it's just the it just goes to show you how deep the men's division has been this year. Um, if I'm gonna take a home run here, I'm taking Burns at a plus forty five hundred. Mm-hmm. Burns has shown top three potential, and he's shown discipline. The one concern I would have though is that his strongest performance came heavily off of an airmail, where he was shooting ninety percent. So, yeah. I don't see him repeating that, but I do like that he's got the confidence in himself and that he is consistent. So I'm looking at him at plus 4,500. 
honestly, if Eric Zocline plays the way he did in the Super Bowl, he was money. You just got to be loose. I mean, don't, don't yeah. even think about it. Just go out there and do that little hip wiggle thing that he was doing because that was working. That was working for him. And if we go over to women's, I don't know if Kimberly Glass is on here. She is. Uh, and that's what I was telling her in the last one when she I, I said, you – they're a perfect game on the Super Bowl. It's the same thing. She's like, but it's not the same thing. I'm like, you need to think that it's the same thing because <laughs> you did very, very well and did not have nerves because it wasn't a big deal. And if she could play like that, I mean, she's unstoppable. And, and Sarah Cassidy was a little bit worrisome at the at the last one. I know that was outside and, and it was different conditions, but um, you, know, you would think she's a lock to get the last one. But... I don't know. So for the women's division here, this is very interesting because the winner of this one is going to play Cheyenne Bubenheim in the first round of the shootout finals. So I don't know. Maybe I'm looking ahead of who I want to see play against her and what style I think goes well. I like the odds that I'm getting there with County Altais at the top. County defeated her in mm-hmm. Tiverton. Um, I like getting County at plus 500. Kaylee burned me so many times this year, so I'm going to stay away from that one. But with County being plus 500, I'm going to take three swings on this on the women's side. I'm taking County. I'm taking Elizabeth there at plus 600. And then I have no idea how she's plus 2,000, but Vanessa Fillingham for me at plus Right. Yeah. I, I totally agree with that. That And, um, it yeah, once again, like, Sarah, you know, Connie, Fillingham, Kimberly. 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 <laughs> what was that? I don't know if I said filling him or filling him. I'm trying to train myself to stop oh. saying filling him. Filling him. There's no H. Him. Yeah, mm. I know. <laughs> it, it can be tough. Um, but last shootout, this is it. This is for all the Marvels to see who's going to grab those remaining spots. They do have to play the one seed, which who's the who was the first doubles? Uh, oh, was it uh, Ryan Smith yeah, and Ryan Wiedenfeld, right? Ryan Smith, Ryan Wiedenfeld. And Kyle, Kyle Malone. Malone. Yeah. Diane. Okay, so there you go. That whoever wins this is going to have to play those guys in the uh, championship over at Worlds. Uh, those tickets are live. If you want to come to any of those broadcasts, uh, those are available for you to snag tickets for. It's only ten dollars to come sit in the stands there in Rock Hill. It's going to be amazing. That includes tickets for the Super Hole, everything like that. Just ten bucks. Um, they, they they will go fast. We do get big audiences there, so definitely grab been, those and come join I've us. Been two point. years last. And there hasn't been one boring match, and the atmosphere is ridiculous. It is it is literally the World Series of our sport, yeah. and you, you're not going to have a better time watching Cornell than at yes. the World Championships. Yeah, it's amazing. You got to come. You got to come. Make the trip. It's so much fun. Well worth it. All right, guys, we are out of time. Uh, Wally, I will see you in Ohio tomorrow. Uh, we're going to go through our last shootout and then the last open, and then we're on to Worlds. So uh, we'll see you guys all very soon.